Hi, and welcome to Mother Dex from the Graphic Design School. My name is Leanne, and today we're going to be creating an engraving effect. We'll be using Photoshop, and then with Photoshop, we'll be loading some brushes and an action to be able to create this engraving effect. So we have an identity here, Tropic Spine Wellness, and if you're anything like me, I'm not an illustrator. So what I've done here is use photographic images and try to create this engraving effect using the actions and a pattern. So I was really inspired by this beautiful identity uh, for Gardan. Here we go. It's much darker than what I have done and this has probably been done by an illustrator by hand. Um, but I'm hoping to kind of move in this direction and maybe just let my client know the kind of thing I'd like to do. Um, but if you just quickly want to get this engraving look, um, we can do it in Photoshop. I'll also be going on and doing some identity pieces uh, in the following week. So you can see how we can apply this identity and create a pattern. Um, but for now, we're just going to look at how we can um, create these leaves in uh, Photoshop to create this illustrative effect. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, just have a look at our images in Photoshop and then I'll be loading the action and the patterns which I'll make available to you. There are ways to do it uh, to create your own action and your own pattern but for now we're just going to go the quick and simple route and just load our own pattern and action to create this effect. So if we go into Photoshop we'll see there's my leaf that we'll be using, there's my butterfly, there's my green leaf and there's my other leaf. So you can see some of them are PNGs with transparent backgrounds, some of them we're going to have to deep etch um, and some of them will give a slightly different treatment but I'll be taking you through how we do that. So Within the brief, you will see that there is an action and a pattern um, file available. So your action file looks like this. We'll just go into our finder. So your action looks like this. It's a .atn and your pattern is a .pat. So the first thing we need to do is just um, upload our action and our pattern. So our pattern, we're going to put it into Photoshop itself. So if we just create another window, we're going to go to our applications and you're going to find your Adobe uh, Photoshop folder. I'm just going to drag that across so we can see where our pattern is. So if you find Adobe Photoshop, we're going to double click on that. Within that folder, you'll find a folder called presets, double click on that and within that, you'll find a folder called patterns and you can double click on that. So I've already loaded up the pattern over there. You can see it's called engraved effect patterns. So what you would do is just select your file, um, your file over here and just drag it across and copy it into patterns and then it is saved. Within Photoshop we'll be loading it up but it's in your preset patterns for now. We'll go straight into our Photoshop file um, so we're going to be working with the sleeve first. Um, first thing we'll do, of course, is just make sure that we've got the brushes loaded that we need and the actions. So um, we're going to go to action over here in the right hand menu. So just open that up. You can see I already have it loaded up. So if I just had to select all of that and delete it. Okay, from actions, I would go into my right hand side and go load actions and there you would find your .atn file click on that and go open and it should open up in your actions so you have actions for a heavy effect medium effect light effect that you can play with from here you know, within our um, layers we're gonna just uh, double click on that so I'm trying to get, actually get a layer I'm going to go Command J and make a layer, double click on your layer and within Pattern Overlay, click on that and just click over there and you'll see a cog. You can see I've loaded up the patterns already and tried different patterns. Just click on your cog there and you should be able to scroll down and load up your um, patterns that you've copied into your Photoshop uh, preset patterns. So just select it there, go OK and they'll be loaded up ready for your action. And I'm just going to go OK. The first thing I'm going to do here is just deep etch this leaf. So 
we'll speed this up and fade out until I'm finished that. Um, but I'll just show you quickly what I'll do. I would just use my quick selection tool and just start to select my leaf. Don't worry about um, whether it's 100% right now. You can hold down Alt Option just to deselect those white areas um, and then add to that. I don't want this white area over here. Um, that's looking pretty good. And then you can go into Select a Mask just to refine it. So go into your Select a Mask and um, you can just refine your, you can use your onion skin or use your marching ants, use your overlay. Overlay is pretty good. I can see over there I've got some areas that I need to refine. Um, so I can just subtract some of that using the brush. And so you go, and so just refine your path. I'll just speed it up for now. And then get back to you once we have our selection. So once you have your selection, your mask that you've just created running around your leaf, you're gonna create a new layer or you can create a new document. I like to create a new document, so we're just gonna go Command C to copy that leaf and then create a new document to create a clipboard the same size as your leaf. Go create and paste that. Um, maybe you make the image size a little bit smaller. That will affect how the pattern uh, looks. If, if that was a little bit too small, let's go image, image size 2000 pixels. Making it a little bit smaller will make the pattern more obvious. If you want the pattern finer, then you would um, just make it, keep it at the same size. I like to add a little bit more contrast here. So you can use your burn tool and just burn around the edges just to make sure that the edges take a little bit more and that's where the, there's more black, there's more denseness in the engraving. Um, or you can dodge the highlights. Don't worry what it does to the green because as you know, we're going to be creating a black and white artwork um, you can even go adjustments, brightness, contrast, if you want to create more contrast between the lights and the darks. And once you're happy with that, I might just add a bit more depth to the shadows. So using my burn tool, make sure your shadows are selected over here. Exposure 100% and you can make it really nice and dark. Great. Um, I can delete that background for now and then we can go to our actions. So with your layer selected, go to your actions and we have our engraved effect over here. We have heavy, medium, light. So you can just try it for a medium at first and then just push the play button and just push continue if it gives you the background um, is not available. And then when you go to your layers, you'll see there's an engraved effect. So if I click off there, there I have my engraved effect and I can just zoom in and you can see how it's apl applied that um, texture to my leaf where the shadows were. If I look at all my layers, you can see it's created multiple layers um, with masks and different patterns. Now if your pattern is too fine or too heavy, you can scale it up and down here. So just make sure that the, the mask and the layer are not linked and then just select that layer and select all the layers and you can edit, transform, scale. You might need to zoom out. There you go. So you can change the texture of the pattern to finer or more black, heavier. So just depending, you can play around with what works for you. There you go. So now I'd like to apply color to that um, leaf. So luckily I still have my layer over there. So I'm just going to hold down command and click on that layer and then create a new layer, which I'm going to place underneath my engraving. And I'm just going to fill it with a nice dark green. So double click on your color and I'm just going to go with the color.
one of our olive green and go OK and then Option Delete to fill it into my background. My engraved effect, I want to have that as a multiply. And then I start to get that nice deep color. You can, uh, if you're not happy with this color, you can change that. Um, and then if you want to have more of a black outline around the edge, I'd select that layer and then add new layer and go edit stroke. Uh, I'm going to make it a black stroke. And we can make it try four pixels wide and do it on the inside and go OK. Deselect. And it just gives me a black outline. So if I, you're happy with that, we're just going to do a save and call it Leaf Fig. And save. We can delete that layer now. Save it and then we're going to merge the visible layers and do a file save as and we're going to save that as a PNG. There we go. So we have our big leaf and then we're going to do the same um, to some of our other leaves. So that's the one we've done already. We're going to do the same to this leaf over here. So if you open that up, we're going to go through the same process that we just did to create the um, leaf fig. And for the other leaf, um, this one, yes, this one, we're going to do something a little bit different. So again, I'm going to just um, select my leaf and I'm just trying to see. There we go. We're going to create another mask in this one, but we'll do something a little bit different because uh, I just want to have a, a leaf in the background that is more of a solid fill. It's selected some of the hand, so we're just going to do a select and mask, and we can um, delete some of that, maybe use a selection. Okay. And once we're happy with that, um, we're just going to go Command J to create a new layer. And I can delete that layer now. Go yes, background. So I have just my leaf layer. Um, and now I want to select just the shadows on this. So I'm going to want to create some more shadows. So again, you can use your um, burn tool and just burn the shadows a little bit more. Maybe you want to burn the mid-tones so everything becomes a little bit darker. I just want to get a nice um, clear outline of this leaf so that most of it is actually shadow. A little bit disappeared there, so I'm just going to actually um, fill that in so there's not a hole. Um, you can even use your adjustments, Command M, and just darken it right up. And go OK. And then we're going to go select color range, and we're going to select shadows, and go OK. So you can see it creates a mask of my um, of my shadow areas and then we're just going to create a solid color layer and make it a deep green again and go OK and then we can delete that background color yes now I have a mask um, a nice solid color leaf and I'm going to just going to crop that so it's a little bit tighter And we're going to save it as a PNG. We call it small leaf PNG. Save. Okay. And then we can close it up. 
things like that. Uh, this one we're applying the same technique that we used using the, um, the engraving. So we're just going to select our medium or our heavy or light and push play and then add a color behind it and so that we create something that looks a bit like this. So many different leaves. So they are used a darker green color and put an outline around it. And then we're just gonna save that. So I've got it in the, in the right folder. a big leaf and it's our PSD so we saved that already and we can close that up and then we did the same thing with the butterfly so your butterfly image which is also supplied um, we're going to do the same thing where we have our butterfly in one layer and then apply the implying medium effect And then once you have your butterfly engraved, look like that. And then I've already added in the color background. Um, so we have our engraving effect. We can then um, just save that. Uh, we can delete that. Uh, merge visible layers and do a save as, maybe we can just crop it a little bit tighter. and do a save. And save it as a PNG. Great. Close that up. I don't need to save that. Close that up. And then we can go straight into Illustrator. So that's what we want to achieve. We're going to go over here to our Tropics logo. So the background has got 10% yellow in. And then my logo is made up of um, the Tropics font is Trajan Pro and Spine Wellness is Kahino Devanagari. I can never say it, but it's a font I like using. Um, I'll, sh I'll um, have the names of the fonts in the brief. So then we have two layers, our background and our logo. We're going to add faded leaves first. So just to add a new layer, I've locked both those layers. I'm going to call that faded, faded leaves and then we're just going to place um, some of these uh, leaves that we've created. So I've got the small leaf over there and I'll replace it. That one, let's try again, small leaf PNG place so they'll be really big which is good because then you can scale them down so now these ones that I've created um, I want to just um, make them a nice kind of background leaf so I'm going to scale them down um, I'm going to make them a little bit more transparent. So my faded leaves, I'm going to make them about 40%. Maybe a little bit lighter, 30%. And then you can use them in different ways on your layout. Just to create um, a little bit of texture behind the bigger leaves, scale them up and down. And you might want to change them once you have everything else in place. And then we're going to place our next layer. So go to your layers, uh, lock that layer. After our faded leaves, we're going to add some of the thin leaves. So create a new layer. I'm going to call it thin leaves. And then we're going to place the, the thinner leaves we created um, over there, those ones. It's just nice to have a contrast of some thinner leaves. Uh, 
and don't worry about um, trimming them now we can always trim everything later so you can have things bleeding off the edges so this is purely to create the logo identity and then we can lock that one um, when we create a wallpaper and a pattern I'll be showing you how to do that in Illustrator create a new layer there and call it small leaves and then we'll get actually be using some of these same leaves so place um, okay, over there. And this time we might just use them 100%. Now, once you get your nice big juicy leaves in, we did right at the beginning, you might want to change some of these. just to create this kind of rainforest effect. And let's do one more layer. Small leaves and we're going to add the big leaves. Oh, not one more layer, we still need to do our butterfly. Um, so we're going to place that with big PNG over there. Scale that down a bit. So these are our most important leaves, so they are the darkest. Take that. So I want them to kind of like frame the logo as such. And the rest is sort of more background. So they can overlap a little bit. But I like some space between them so you can see some of the other leaves coming through. And then once I've placed these, uh, we can lock that and then maybe move some of the other leaves and scale them down to work within the spaces. So add a little bit so you can see what's going on and just get it working with um, everything that's there. So I can leave you to play around with those to get the right effect. Maybe copy some little thin ones over here so there's something going on in the background. There we go. And just save that. And then if you want to crop those um, leaves we can just do it layer by layer and create a block over that and crop it within the rectangle of my document so this is an A4 that I have here um, so for example we can just do let's just lock those layers and go faded leaf go to your rectangle tool you can just click on there so it is a rectangle so I can just go OK um, I can align it to my document and then zoom out, select all my leaves and it would have selected my rectangle and then just go command 7 and it will crop it within and then go your next layer, thin leaves, again just draw your rectangle, align it to your document, select all, command 7 Go to your small leaves, rectangle to the size of your document, make sure it's unlocked, command 7, and so we can crop everything within our document. If you want to move something within your um, cropped layer, you can just double click and you'll be able to move elements within that layer. I'm going to lock that and then we're just going to add 
uh, butterflies and that'll add some color here. And copy and paste. There's our PNG. Huge butterfly. Okay. I'm going to drop my logo be behind my butterfly. A little bit of space around this butterfly so it just stands proud. So maybe uh, move some of these smaller leaves here. And my faded leaves, I can even fade them down a little bit more. my butterflies. I'm just going to paste one more there. You can paste it or you can just use the one we have there already. Hold on option to copy it and then give it a little tilt. Maybe increase the size a little bit. And there we go. So this needs some refining. There's some space here that I need to work out. Um, but basically You've sort of got the start of this beautiful tropical look with the illustrative effect um, without actually doing any illustration. So I will be providing you with the ATN file, the action file, and the PSD pattern that you can load up if you just follow the instructions at the beginning of this video to get the same effect. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you can create. Next week we'll be creating a wallpaper and packaging with this design. So we'll be looking at a really clean step and repeat using various elements that we've created right here. So get started on creating your identity and the elements so that we can work together and create our patterns together next time. So that's all from Dex, from me. Um, have fun with this one. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.